This video is sponsored by AG1. Now, I don't know if I've ever told you guys this, but my gut health is pretty bad. I got a bad tummy. So when AG1 offered for me to try their health supplements, I was like, yes. Please, I need it. See, most of the time, the food we eat throughout the day doesn't have all the daily vitamins and nutrients that we need. I personally was starting every day with a cup of coffee and a piece of toast, so it's no surprise that I was not feeling so hot. But after incorporating a cup of AG1 into my morning routine, I feel so much better. AG1 is a comprehensive daily nutrition with 75 vitamins, minerals, and whole food sourced ingredients, and it's super easy to incorporate into my daily routine. After starting my day by drinking this stuff, I feel so much better. I have more daily energy, I don't need to rely on coffee as much and then deal with the subsequent crash. And best of all, my stomach feels better than ever, baby. So if you want to get in on this yourself, you can head to my link, drinkag1.com slash cosmonaut. You'll get a free one-year supply of AG vitamins plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. In case you missed it, that's drinkag1.com slash cosmonaut, or you can click the link in the description. So after many years, The Flash is finally out. And I said for those many years that if this movie ever came out, it has the potential to be pretty entertaining. The Flash is one of the biggest superheroes of all time, and he has a lot of really cool stories that would make for decent movies. And it's weird that he's never gotten much representation in media outside of the Justice League cartoon, and this, obviously. And the reviews for this movie were either, it's amazing, it's fantastic, it's the best movie ever, or it's horrible, it's awful, don't watch it. And as usual, I'm here to tell you that both parties are correct. Everybody is right. But really though, I'm actually shocked to say that I kind of enjoyed this movie. With each subsequent trailer, the movie kind of looked worse and worse, and it was getting a little concerning. And yes, the movie is ugly, the plot is kind of stupid, and Ezra Miller does need to pay for their sins, but I still kind of liked it. This film features master of crime Ezra Miller as two Barry Allens alongside two Batmen to save two universes. With this being the first ever real Flash movie, I'm actually very happy with how they work around the origin story. Because as you know, a lot of movies nowadays just kind of forego the origin story. If it's a character that we've already seen, if it's a character that has had a bunch of movies already, sometimes they think, all right, just forget it. Don't do the origin. Everybody already gets it. But The Flash is kind of an interesting case because, yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff before, but he's never been the main focus of anything other than his own TV show. So there are a lot of concepts to the character that need to be explained to a general audience. Because if you ask, like, a regular person what The Flash can do, they'll say, he runs fast. And this movie does manage to work in a little bit of an origin story for The Flash by giving it to the other Barry Allen in the story. This movie takes the Flash that we're used to from these movies and makes him the mentor to another Barry Allen. And this makes him much more interesting and it gets him away from being just comic relief. Having a character who's usually obnoxious be the straight man to an even more obnoxious version of himself is an incredibly smart idea. Watching him come to terms with the fact that he kind of annoys everybody is actually pretty interesting. And the adventure that they go on is very clearly inspired by Flashpoint as well as Back to the Future, which is a pretty good combination. This movie definitely leans into the wacky science fiction aspects of The Flash, and that scene in the Snyder Cut where Barry traveled through time was honestly, still to this day, one of the coolest scenes I've ever seen in a superhero movie. And while nothing in this movie gets to that level, the sequence where Barry first travels through time in this movie was presented in a way that I found to be very effective. And I found myself enjoying the movie the most when it centered around Barry exploring this alternate world that he created, as opposed to the later parts of the movie, which are mostly just mindless action. And most surprisingly, I found myself really enjoying Michael Keaton's Batman in this story. When I saw the trailer, I kind of didn't really feel anything. I thought he was here purely for fan service, but he was honestly one of the best characters in the story. I was worried that this movie would be a multiverse fan service clusterfuck like we've been getting in a lot of superhero movies lately, but honestly for the most part, the fan service was handled just fine. It's not really the focal point of the story, and I'm very grateful for that. That is until the last little chunk of the movie. I don't want to spoil anything, but near the end of the movie, 
we get a montage of tasteless fan service. And if you've seen any trailer for this movie, you probably already know this, but this movie is hideous. At least as far as the CGI goes. A lot of people are saying that this is like the ugliest superhero movie ever, but when they're not relying too heavily on CGI, the movie looks pretty cool. It looks better than most MCU movies, if we're being honest. Until the screen is filled with ugly CGI human faces. This movie is trapped deep in the depths of the uncanny valley. There are so many shots of plastic, creepy CGI humans. It is the single most distracting thing in the movie. However, even without the CGI holding things back, I did find that as the movie trudged through the final act, I started to kind of clock out mentally. I remember when I saw the trailers for this movie, I was thinking to myself, why does it look like this whole movie takes place in an empty Dragon Ball Z wasteland? And yeah, the entire final act is just CGI action in this big, ugly field. And it's not the worst dumb CGI battle that I've seen in a superhero movie, but it's still an ugly CGI battle. And it's a little disappointing because a lot of the other action scenes in the movie are very entertaining. And this is just one that doesn't really stand out in comparison. And then it leads to the ultimate climax of the film, where all the sci-fi elements of the story just start to create a bunch of plot holes. And with a lot of time travel stories, I accept the fact that plot holes are inevitable. But this movie gets to a point where the story just straight up doesn't make any sense anymore if you think about it. And overall, I think like the final part of the climax of this movie is just kind of bad. And for the briefest of moments, the movie just kind of isn't very good anymore. Which is a little disappointing because everything before and after is a lot of fun. And thankfully, this brief moment of shittiness doesn't last very long. Because I really do like how the movie ends, and even though I don't think we're going to get a follow-up to this movie anytime soon, I had a lot of fun with what I watched. Which, honestly, I didn't expect. I think I'd classify this movie as dumb fun. And I'd say that both of those words are capitalized. This movie kind of knows exactly what it wants to be, and I think for the most part, it accomplishes that efficiently. It's not really a movie that I think you need to go see in the theater anytime soon, but it's definitely one that, you know, if you see it on HBO, you can put it on. You'll probably have a good time. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give The Flash a surprising 7 out of 10.